What is up, guys? Welcome back to another video in our WordPress plugin building series. Uh, I guess it's based on YouTube at this point. But uh, hey, in our last video, you know what we did. We made a user messaging system, uh, a really basic one, but extremely versatile. We could use it in multiple situations and cases. And uh, and in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue on our multiple channel inclusions by, uh, we're actually gonna build the dropdown and all that for displaying the channels, then we're gonna add them to the custom posts. Cause we already added that new custom post. So all we gotta do is literally s -s -s steal some code from our previous stuff and then just include it right in here and make our life real easy. Uh, but hey, if you are not subscribed, hit the button. It's free, it costs you nothing, it's super fast, and it helps me out. Uh, and if you already have done that, I really appreciate you. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and hop right into this. We're gonna create this uh, visual side first where we can add, then we'll add them as custom posts, then we'll display them, and then maybe, maybe, if it's not too long, we'll build a delete button, but we'll see about that. All right, so back here in our callback page, we're down here at that form that's adding. And right now, I just want to give us a little bit of space, man. Don't stand so close. Here we go. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add in a new form. Um, we're gonna head all on back to old trusty bootstrap. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this right here. This is a, uh, a very trusty one I've been using multiple times. The reason I keep starting from scratch on this, okay, just so everybody knows, is that I want people to be able to follow it on their own and know that, look, not, you don't have to write it. You can also just do it the same way. So we're gonna take away the text class because we do not need that one. We're gonna keep the options class. Uh, let's see, we wanna keep the first one, not the multiple select. So we need to get rid of all this other stuff except that first select. And then we need to do one more critical thing, which is we gotta add a button. So let's add the submit type button into our new form. Perfect. We now have a little form. Uh, if we go back and we refresh, you're gonna see it's just another a small form sitting underneath this with another horizontal rule and nothing going on. Perfect. All right. So what we need to do is we need to um, check if we have any of those custom classes that we made in the last one and then uh, display them as the options. And that's pretty simple. I actually want some space from this button. It's already visually bothering me a lot. Uh, much better. So, uh, and that's actually submit. We actually need to make this probably delete. So let's say uh, BTN, I think it's alert, right? Or warning probably. Yeah, I think it's warning. Delete this channel. Delete, delete, delete. Let's see what that should be red now. Aha, or no, it would have been uh, alert. Uh, warning or danger. Alert danger, that's what it is. Let's just change that to danger. Okay, so now on this, we have a, we're gonna have a red button, and now we have some stuff, and uh, right now it does nothing, obviously. Uh, it submits and does nothing. Well, we're gonna do a little bit of st 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 stealing from the one right above it, right here, where we're gonna take this input. Remember, it has to return to this page. Always has to return to this page. You must have that first. All right, and then in the form, as you guys fully well know, the method is going to equal G E T and the action is gonna equal hmm, nothing perhaps all right yep and it's gonna head right back here because it has the page as a hidden value so and I've explained this many many times many 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 times uh, in the case of speed running this would be like uh, Darby and explaining the bus theory in Mario for the millionth time to people so um, as you guys know page has to be returned in order for the alert system to work it has to have page first contain the page, then all of our get variables, or it won't know where to go, it sends you right into the dead zone. I don't know why I keep calling it the dead zone, but that's what I'm officially calling it. And so, all right, so now here we are, we have a form select, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this select to say existing channel IDs, existing channel lids, if you were just to read it right out. Okay, and then that's the select ID. Remember, it has to have that as a name, or this is not gonna work because that's how it sends it through. Okay, we're gonna get rid of all these options. We're gonna do something mighty special, which is we're gonna do some PHP right here, because why not? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pop in some PHP here, give ourselves a little bit more space, man. Don't stand so close. And now we're gonna say, get all the channel IDs. And we're gonna put them right here. This is extremely simple. We've done this a gazillion, 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 gazillion times. So we're going to say all channel IDs equals, all right, come on now, equals get posts. All right, now we've done this a ton of times. In fact, why don't we just take it from somewhere 
else, like right here, for example. We just op I just opened up the importer call page because we have it in here for sure. Uh, where we right here see this get post post type number order ascending we can just take it from right here this is exactly the function we're going to use we've already written it a bunch of times that's why it makes no sense for me to just keep writing it longhand however I am gonna get rid of the order in this particular case because I don't need that here number of posts remember I keep saying to you guys you can actually set this as a value of anything you want or you could leave it blank and I'm 99% sure it gets everything when it's left blank I like to just put something anyway post type now, if we head back to our base class, you're going to see that we have a uh, we added that ch YouTube custom YouTube channel IDs, and so um, in order to find that, we have to go back to the admin class, and it'll be down here. It's what we named it. We named it YT Channel Lid or <laughs> Channel ID, and let's get rid of the importer page and go back to our settings callback. All right, so we need that right here. So now we're getting all of the channel IDs that we have saved so far. Well, you and I, the good chums that we are. We both know that the uh, user has not added anything. Chances are likely because we haven't given them the option to do so. So it would be a miracle if it was added by this point. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to run a check to see if there are any to display. Wonderful. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say for each. And we're going to do all channel lids as channel ID. Da, da, da. Now we're going to cycle through and we're going to get each one, right? For each as each one. Back on protocol, if you needed to take that code from somewhere else, you could take it just like this. It's exactly the same thing as we did there. Just so you guys know. All right. So now we have a for each where we're cycling each post. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to actually say if count. Remember, we can actually count all channel lids. Actually, this should have happened prior to this loop. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing it inside this for each. We really should do that out here. We should say if count uh, all channel IDs, and then we should say equals equals. Remember, you can't do one equals zero. Now, what we should do is we should call that. Making more sense? So that way, if it's currently zero, then uh, there we go. Perfect. So if it's zero, we don't want anything to happen. And if, if there is more than zero, however, we do want something to happen. So in that case, we just have to go like that and write an else. And now we, oh, if I can actually get it to work. There we go. We are now in business. So this is going to say nothing happens. Or we just output a single item, which looks like this. We would say echo an option item. And actually, we would probably make this unselectable to the user. In fact, I need to put some tags around it or some open and closes. And then we're just going to say um, no channel IDs. Okay. And then and this other one does a for each and does nothing. Let's actually go take a look and see what happens when we currently refresh. Aren't you guys curious? Mm hmm. Look at this because there isn't any. Now we are having this one here and it is going to display us the message because it thinks it's adding one, but it's not. And so now nothing is happening. Well, this is going to, now what we're ready for is we are ready to actually build in the uh, addition where it adds it as a custom post. We're ready to actually do that up here in the code or in the PHP uh, opening up top. So let's do, uh, aside from our user message system, let's say check to see if the user is ready. Actually, I want to do this above the status message. The status message really should probably come last in the page. Now that I think about it. Check to see if we need to add a post. Right? And uh, we could actually do that right here with another is set for channel ID, just like this. It's going to be redundant to do this again uh, below. We would actually just set the message in here, by the way. I'm just showing you multiple ways to go about it. So if is set new channel ID, we're going to follow the same exact logic of what we have down here, below, below, below. So, uh, there we go. So now we're going to say add the new channel ID. Perfect. Really, we should have had them be able to add a channel name as well. Um, I'm considering adding that because uh, otherwise you don't know necessarily what the channel ID is. Hmm. <laughs> 
I don't know. I'm thinking about that for a second because it might be worth it. All right, well, at this second, we're just going to say the channel ID, and then in the future, we might append it. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to kind of steal this from a previous uh, from a previous section as well. If we head back to our importer call and we head up, we actually have this right here for adding a new post. We already did this, and so you guys can easily follow this by just uh, going and following the same code. And so we're going to paste this in. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to say add a new post. Now, we don't have this information. And also our uh, post type is different. And we do have that down below if you take a scroll, scroll, scroll. YT channel ID is the new type of post that we're going to be posting to. Uh, so we can put that right here. And then we don't need the tags input or the category. We just need the content and the title. And this is why I said we might have wanted to grab the name of the channel too, like how the person put it in, because see the title is going to end up being the uh, get variable. Oh boy. All right. It's going to end up being that get variable. And uh, it's going to be the new channel ID. And the description is just going to end up being a blank. It has to be something in order for it to work. So we're just going to say new channel ID or new channel post because it has to be something or it won't post it. And then the result is just basically a variable that allows us to have the ID. And we can have this in case we want to add metadata. But in this case, we don't really care about adding metadata for the moment. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. All right, so that's going to add the new channel ID. Or no, sorry, we do have to keep that. We do, we do, because that's inserting the post. Otherwise, we would get rid of this part, and we would just keep this part. But let's just leave it as result anyway, so it's accessible via a variable. Okay, so now it's going to be adding that new post. So guess what we can do now? Down below, we're going to get the, you guessed it, post title. Because when we're cycling through the database and we're looking at each post, we can get the post title, which is going to contain the channel ID. And we already just set that up down here in a for each. I hope I'm not moving too fast here for you guys. So here's the for each. Now what we can do is we can echo out a new statement just like this. We can say option and then we're going to do a little bit of concatenation and we're going to say give me the channel ID and then give me the post title. Guess what the post title is going to be? Oh, uh, that's right. And close that option. Perfect. Let's go back and take a look at what we got. So this is now, this is going to add here now as a new channel ID. It's going to be available, it's going to say it here, and it's going to be available here. Let's go ahead and do another one too. Let's just say like um, channel 2. Submit it, channel 2 is going to submit, and now you're going to see we have two channels to select from. And then we're going to be able to delete them as well. And I don't think we're too, too far to uh, delete them, so let's go ahead and work on... Uh, just go ahead and deleting this post. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make this so the button refreshes the page, obviously. We already set that up so when the button submits, it's going to be carrying through the option ID under the existing channel IDs. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to take a quick scroll back up. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to say check to see if the user is removing a channel ID. And you guys look what's happening. We're going to do all the same stuff as above. We're going to say if is set. This is kind of like a wash, rinse, repeat type uh, thing we're doing here. Existing channel IDs. That means that the user has sent through a new ex or an existing channel ID. So we're going to say if it is not equal to nothing. Or I'm sorry, that was an is set variable. That was not for the check to see if it equals something. Here's where we're going to do that check. If that get variable is not equal to nothing. Now we need to remove a channel. Remove the channel. Easy enough. So now what we need to do is we need to cycle through and we need to grab all of the, uh, we need to, or actually, well, do we? Hmm. Debating whether I want to make this easier on us or whether I want to actually have it search. Because we can do a lot of stuff right here. We can have it do this like three or four different ways. I'm trying to debate if I want to have it do it. Hmm. Yeah, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Let's make this a lot easier on ourselves. Let's see how it has this post title right here. Well, remember how I told you that every post has the ID and we can access that easily? Here's what we're going to do. Let's make this a lot easier on ourselves. And let's do like, um, 
an, a, a variable or like a, a splitter that you would norm, normally not see, like this forward slash. That means the user couldn't add a forward slash. So let's do something that's unique that a user would never enter generally like that. And I'll show you why this matters. And there's a couple ways we could do this, but at this moment I just want to do this for ease and speed. All right, so on a page refresh, right now, if actually if I go back up uh, under there, removing channel ID is going to do nothing. Let's go ahead and do a quick refresh. I actually want to take off that new channel ID. And remember, we're not duplicate checking either, which is important. Uh, let's see. I think maybe it's a capital ID. <laughs> channel ID ID. Make sure that's the same. Might be a capital. Let's just check that out. Yep. Okay, so you see this 554 and 555? That's the chan That's the actual post ID in relation to this uh, channel post. So here's what we can do now. And it's just being split up by this concatenator or by this separator that I put in. Now, the reason why I just did that real time to make it easier on myself was because up here, guess what I can do? I can say uh, stir uh, deletion, like deletion channel or something like that. And I can say explode. And now here's what it wants. Um, the first thing is it wants to know what you want to split. Split a string by a string. What's the delimiter? Well, we just created it below, didn't we? So the delimiter is going to be this. This whole thing, including the spaces. We just created that so we had a unique uh, delimiter to go ahead and delimit this by. It's making it a lot easier for us. So now we're going to explode that. And then it's going to ask for the string, the one that we want to split. Well, guess what that is? That is the incoming get variable existing channel IDs. Okay, I don't think we need the third variable in here. Uh, the limit, nah, we're all good there. So now we're gonna have a string that contains two items, but remember, once again, programming starts at zero, zero, zero. You have to start at zero. Arrays go zero, one, two, three. Everything in programming goes zero. Programs want zero first. If you have zero and one, that's seen as two items. Okay? I hope that's clear. Uh, because for me, when I started programming, that was so confusing for me when the first time I was told. And then I got into multidimensional arrays, and that was even worse. But here's the thing. We're going to say stir. We're going to call a... Uh, now we're going to say delete the uh, post channel ID item. And that goes just like this. Uh, WP... Actually, we need to have an underscore. Delete post and all it wants is the post ID well guess what we just brought that in I'll go over that in just a second and we need it at item one and uh, and do we want a force deletion I think we're gonna go ahead and just say true make sure it gets force deleted okay so why did we grab stir deletion at one well when a when a variable or when a variable is created as an array and explode creates an array it says I need to delimit this string by something meaning you're looking to split a string into multiple array items what do you want me to split it by well we created this delimiter below we could have created anything we wanted as a delimiter I put this just to give you an extreme example and we're splitting the get variable when the user submits that form that has this info in it so this will travel as a get variable with this information, it's going to split it by that right there, and it's going to have two items. This is item 0 and item 1, and item 0 is going to contain channel 2, and item 1 is going to contain the post ID. Well, when you delete a post in WordPress, it wants the channel ID. So, in slot number 1 of our array, it now contains the channel ID based on what the user put in, and that's why we added it down below. So it's going to force deletion on that. But there's something else we can do. We can also do this. Set the status message haha -ha, look at that here's where we can get the first example of that going out stir status message equals let's go ahead and create some info let's just say div and then let's give it a class of uh, how about alert alert warning or uh, how about danger let's make it red let's give it some flame red like Iron Man. And then, let's just say you deleted this channel from the database. And then it's gonna say, 
would you like to remove all the videos with this channel ID? Now here's the important part here. We have to do something else up above because since we just deleted it from the database, our database no longer stores it, meaning we don't have access to the channel ID anymore. There's a way to fix this. Let's just do a forward slash and I'm gonna output the channel ID in here that we want. All right, so here's how we're gonna do that. Um, before we delete, we still have it as a stored variable, right? The channel ID, even though it's deleted from the database, we still have it in our um, array right here. So here's what we can do. We can end the string and concatenate and we can say uh, stir deletion channel at item uh, zero is going to contain the channel ID and so we can actually keep it stored in temporary memory right here and that way um, we can have the user click a button and it would go and delete based on that channel ID. It would search the database and all that. We're going to do that in one of the next videos anyway, so it'll make more sense. But stir status message now equals that. Everything should work just fine. Let's take a quick look. Okay, so let's remove channel two. Delete this channel. Hmm, our message didn't show, interestingly, but it is gone from the database. Why did our message not show? Stir status message equals. Down below, it should have said stir status message is not equal to nothing. Oh, duh, the reason it's not showing the message is because right after I set it here, I just initialized it here and uh, <laughs> and made it nothing. So that's not going to show anything. So here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to add that up above. Make sure it's before everything. Sometimes little stupid mistakes like that are so funny they get you in the end. I think this video is already like 20 minutes or something. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so back over here. Let's go ahead and add a new channel ID. Whoops, there's no channel ID to delete based on that. Uh, well, and let's see, there's no channel ID on that. So let's go ahead and remove that. And then back over here, I just wanna make sure that the href is correct and it's showing it. Oh yeah, there was no text in the href, there's why. Remove the videos too, there we go. So right now we just added a new channel and then we have it right here with the channel ID. Let's go ahead and delete this channel. You're going to see existing channel shows up here. You deleted this channel from the database. Would you like to remove all videos with this channel ID? Yes, remove the videos too. Now as you can see, look at the channel ID and look at, even though it's removed from the database, it's sitting in our link right here. That's because we temporarily have it in memory right here on the page. So if we were to click this, I could actually take it to a variable. I could send that get variable to the deletion page or a command, even back to this page, and it would delete all the videos too. And nothing's in our example. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up right here because this video is already getting pretty long. Uh, and... Guess what? We now have a successful add channel IDs and delete channel IDs. So guess what comes next? We get to start importing, baby, from multiple channels at once. That's going to be what the next videos are about. And also maybe some uh, multi—I mean, maybe some uh, detection to determine, you know, duplicate entries and stuff like that. But let's let's just get some multiple channels importing. I'm really excited about that. And if you guys if you guys are getting value out of this, hey. Just go ahead and subscribe, will you? And if you're already subscribed, I appreciate you very much. Uh, once again, for anybody getting JSON errors, please watch my most recent video. Please, please, please. It'll show you what I did wrong as the person showing you guys this stuff. You did not do anything wrong. It'll show you what I did wrong and how you can fix it. Uh, other than that, hey, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one, all right, where we actually start getting some multiple channels brought in.